Have you recently faced a chapter 13 dismissal that's led to collection calls coming and starting again? While you actually may receive a refund, you may be considering what your chapter 13 dismissal options are. Now, the goal here is to make the most informed decision and get you out of the debt. And so that's what we're gonna go through today. Welcome to Ascend Finance YouTube channel where we cover chapter 13 bankruptcy and help you understand the costs, pros and cons to help you be more informed and get you out of debt cheaper, easier and faster. My name is Justin, let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna cover a chapter 13 dismissal and your options moving forward. Now, I would like to make it clear that this is not legal advice, but more so informational only. Our goal here is to educate folks. Again, we're not giving you legal advice, just information. The four things I'm gonna to cover today are A, how does a chapter 13 dismissal work? B, what are your options moving forward now that you've been dismissed? C, what are common reasons for a chapter 13 dismissal? And D, what are the consequences of a chapter 13 dismissal? So everyone's situation is unique. And so we were trying to figure out the best way to help you and personalize this video to your situation. So what we did was we built a free debt relief calculator that'll help you understand the pros and cons of your different options. Now, if you like this video, clicking the like button is always encouraging to me. Also, if you'd like to see additional content that'll ideally get you out of debt, please subscribe as we're trying to make videos weekly. Now, let's get started. So the first thing you may be wondering is, how does a chapter 13 dismissal refund even work? Now, in short, a chapter 13 trustee can hold any money that actually remains undistributed to the credit. And so this money should return to you, right? The debtor, after your case has been dismissed. Now the chapter 13 trustee must actually file a detailed accounting with the court before returning any money to you. Now the bankruptcy attorney may make a claim on those funds for potential unpaid professional fees, but most cases the refund could also be subject to a wage garnishment order or an IRS levy. So it's just important to know what you had active before filing as those may actually have impacts. Now, the reason why if you had like an active garnishment before filing and now they can potentially start garnishing again is the automatic stays being lifted off your accounts. So there could be a garnishment starting again, but it really does depend. And that's something you probably want to address with the attorney you filed with. Now, let's help you understand the different chapter 13 dismissal options. Fortunately, you should have several options after your case has been dismissed. Uh, one could be refiling under a seven or a 13. Now, with refiling the case, I think it would really come down to understanding the reason your case was dismissed in the first place, right? And so once you've kind of understood, okay, this is why I dismissed, if I refile, am I gonna be in the same spot as it was before, right? And so it's it's really, really imperative to understand, okay, well, first, why did I dismiss? What's happening? Did I miss a payment? Did I have to voluntary dismissal? Was it my choice? Did I wanna get out of this because the payment was too high, right? There's so many different reasons that I'll cover in a short bit, but first, understand why your case is dismissed and then move forward. Now, generally the most common option when your case has been dismissed could be potentially a debt settlement program or filing a chapter seven. You could convert it potentially or most likely just have to refile as a seven. Now you may have the option to convert to the chapter seven, but that's gonna be, like I said before, before your case was dismissed. This can be a much quicker way out, right? Assuming you qualify. And so if you're able to convert to a chapter seven, you should be able to discharge your debts then and you receive your discharge in the mail there and move forward. However, it's important to understand with the attorney, whether it makes sense to file a seven, whether you have any risk of losing any property or assets, right? And so if you do qualify, you may be able to convert it before dismissing, or you may just have to refile as a seven after waiting the period of time. Now, you might be wondering, what are some of the most common reasons someone may have a dismissal of their chapter 13? Now, let's start with the basics. Chapter 13 is generally over five years. So although some folks can actually get it over three years, most times it's actually over five. Now, either case, three or five years can be a very very long time, right? And so things can happen. Your income can go up, your expenses could go up, your income could decrease, your, you know, like a job loss, something could happen. So over that period of time, if let's say you miss a chapter 13 payment, maybe you don't appear or attend at one of the hearings, potentially don't complete one of your bankruptcy courses, you don't file the required tax returns needed, you don't file all the bankruptcy reforms needed, you don't submit the documents on time to the trustee, like you're missing deadlines, all of those things could contribute to why your case could be dismissed. 
passed. Now, something that's important to understand though, that it takes time potentially for the case to be dismissed. So if you're worried that because you missed a payment or any of those things that happened, you may be able to reach out to your attorney or the trustee appointed to your case and they be able to help you understand what steps are needed to keep your case active. Now, let's say you can't keep it active. The case is going to dismiss. What are your consequences? Well, let me help you understand that when you're dismissed, your debt is not forgiven or discharged, right? In other words, you still owed what you owed when you entered into the bankruptcy. If you've actually made payments to the unsecured debt in the plan, the creditors actually must give you credit for any of those payments. So if you've already paid 50% of the debt back, that should hold true after being dismissed. Now, that doesn't mean the creditors won't start collecting after that. So that could be one consequence consequence that you still owe the debt and they're going to start calling you, sending you letters, maybe filing a debt collection lawsuit, trying to garnish your wages, maybe repo or try to foreclose if there was something in arrears there. Now, it's important to understand that you do have options though if they're collecting. You can try to negotiate as we talked about earlier, try to settle. And so, like I said earlier, we did link a chapter 13 dismissal options calculator underneath in the description below that'll ideally help you understand what the cost is going to look like to do these other options, the pros and cons and whether you may be a good fit for it. And if you have questions after taking that calculator, you can speak with me, you can speak with one of us here, and I would be more than happy to help you kind of understand what you can do now. Because some options may work for somebody, but they may not work for someone else. And so it's important to understand that your situation is unique and we get that. And so feel free to leave us a question in the comment section below. You can call or text us at 833-272-3631 and we'll do our best to get back to you as quickly as we can if we're closed or busy. Thanks again so much for watching and I'm always here if you have questions. Bye.